Let us now look at the next example from model 1 of data sufficiency. The question here is what is the sum which earned interest? So we need to find out that sum which has earned interest here and we know that sum is nothing but the principal amount why because on this sum we have earned interest we always earn interest on the principal so we need to find out the principal p in this question let us now look at the two statements the statement one here is the total simple interest was rupees 7000 after seven years that means total simple interest si was 7000 after a time period of seven years now going by the formula of simple interest we know that si is equal to ptr by 100 now we need to find out principal p in this question to find out the principal we should know what is simple interest what is the time period and what is the rate of interest from statement one we see that the interest is given to us that means si is known to us and also it is earned after seven years that means time period here is equal to seven years but the rate of interest is not known until and unless we know what is the value of r the principal cannot be calculated why because to find out the principal from this equation we should know si t and r si and t are given in statement one but r is not given to us that means very clearly statement one is not sufficient to answer the question why because the value of r is not known so we can say statement one alone cannot give us the answer let us now look at the statement 2. Statement 2 says the total of sum and simple interest was double of the sum after 5 years. That means after 5 years, when the time is 5 years, the total of sum and simple interest. We very well understand that total of sum, that is principal and interest is nothing but the total amount. Total amount which is denoted as A. So the total amount A was double of sum. What do we mean by double of sum? Double of principal. Why? Because sum here is nothing but principal. So from statement 2, we know that total amount A is equal to double of principal. A is equal to 2P after 5 years when the time is 5 years. Amount is nothing but principal plus interest. So we can say P plus SI is equal to 2P. So from this very clearly, SI is equal to 2P minus P, which is P. And the time period here is 5 years. So from statement 2, we know that after a time period of 5 years, simple interest is equal to P. We know that simple interest is nothing but PTR by 100. So P into T into R by 100 is equal to P. P and P gets cancelled and T is equal to 5 years. Now very clearly, if we substitute time as 5, we will be able to calculate R from statement 2. Why? Because P anyway has got cancelled, we can say R is equal to 100 by T. So by substituting t of 5, we can calculate the value of r. So statement 2 will help us in knowing what is the value of r. But again, we cannot find out what is the principle only by using statement 2. Why? Because here we only know that time period is 5 years and the rate of interest r can be calculated. But what is principle is not known to us. So we can say that r will be equal to 100 by t. That is nothing but 100 by 5 which is equal to 20. 20% 20 per annum. That means from statement 2 we are able to find out r. That is 20% per annum. And we already know what is the time period. 5 years that is given here. That means from statement 2 we are able to find out the value of r. Rate of interest 20% per annum. And we also know that the time period is 5 years. But again, if we try to understand, time period is already given in statement 2, R can be calculated, but simple interest is not known. Until and unless we know what is simple interest, principle cannot be calculated. Why? Because the equation to be used here is SI equals to PTR by 100. So from statement 2, SI is not known, but T and R both are known to us. Until and unless we know what is SI, P cannot be calculated. That means even statement 2 alone fails to give us the answer. So now we can understand that in statement 1, the rate of interest R is not mentioned and in statement 2, the simple interest SI is not mentioned and that is the reason individually they fail to answer the question. But if we try to combine both the statements, why are we combining both the statements here? Because individually the statements have failed to answer the question. So if we try to combine both the statements together, we know that simple interest SI is equal to 7000 from statement 1 after a time period of 7 years that is time period is 7 years and from statement 2 we are able to say that rate of interest is 20 percent per annum that means by using both the statements together we know what is si what is t and the value of r once we know si t and r we can find out the principle by using the equation si equals to ptr by 100 that means very clearly if we use the information together from statement 1 and statement 2 we can find out what is the principle p 
because SI is equal to 7000, time is equal to 7 years and rate of interest is equal to 20% per annum. Hence, the principal can be obtained by using both the statements together. Remember friends, there is no need to substitute the values in the equation and find out what is the principal. Why? Because as I've mentioned, it is only about checking the sufficiency of the data but not about solving the question. We can only understand that yes, the principle can be obtained by both the statements together. So the answer here is both the statements together are sufficient. Both 1 and 2 together will be sufficient to answer this question. That is nothing but option number 5. Both 1 and 2 together are sufficient to answer the question. So this is how if and only if individually the statements fail to answer the question, we combine and check whether we can get the answer by using the statements together or not.